It's been a long time since I've seen Nico. And then there's this telegram. Sender unknown. It says Nico's dead. The rain was pattering onto the passenger plane from Madrid to Paris, while it was in its final descent. Dismal day in this big city. It's strange seeing Rougeri after all those years. So let's go. Nico, thank God you're okay. 
George. I thought something had happened to you. Why would you think that? Um, did I get it wrong completely? This telegram here. I don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about it. Is that all you have to say? For God's sake, I, I was worried about you. As you can see, I'm fine. Would you mind leaving now? I've got a lot of work to do. Nico, what's wrong with you? I travel all the way from America to be close to you, to look after you, to have you near me, and now you're so dismissive. Sorry, George. I'm busy right now. I'd better go then. Would be better. Yes, it's me, Nicole. Georges has just been in. The telegram arrived after all. Hmm, strange. No, it makes no sense to talk to Nico right now. I'm kind of expecting a mad clown to jumping around the corner and knocking me out with his accordion. My fears are proved to be unfounded. Instead, I'm standing in the middle of Paris, confused. I have questions, so many questions. Does Nico have anything to do with this telegram? If yes, why would she do a thing like that? I think about it for some time, until I see her, sitting there patiently selling flowers just as though time had stopped she helped me once why not a second time the flower vendor has broadened her assortment if I remember correctly she didn't have tulips a couple of years ago as usual I don't want any flowers excuse me Oui? Oh, it's you. Didn't I tell you you would come back? <laughs> um, yes, you sure did. Oh, no, I'm afraid I don't know what's going on with your girlfriend. Pardon? Ah, you were reading my mind. Well, it's in my nature to predict the conversational topics people are going to confront me with. <laughs> And what do I want to ask? You want to know what your girlfriend has been doing during the last couple of weeks. Damn it. You're absolutely right. And I can't tell you anything precise. Only this. Your girlfriend went out late in the evening a lot. Was she accompanied by a worm? Pardon? A blonde man with a ponytail. Ugly, wears specs and shorts and goes by the name of Andre Labanu. I don't think so. Ah, uh, a lot off my mind. After a few days, her going out suddenly stopped. I hadn't seen her again till this morning. What do you mean? She didn't seem to leave her flat. That's not like her at all. Maybe you were talking to a customer when she came out. No, I don't think so. I have plenty of time to look at the scenery, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. Business is going badly. Well, you could put it like that. I'm sorry, I didn't want to rub salt into the wound. You still have me as a regular customer, and I will certainly be back. What have you been doing all this time? I've been selling flowers, telling fortunes to the customers, the usual stuff. <laughs> well, it's not that usual, is it? It is to me. Don't you ever get fed up with selling flowers and telling fortunes? You know, I've done this for years now. After such a long time, it is difficult to start anything different. You could produce your own TV show. Something like, things you always wanted to know about your future. Not a bad idea. But I think I'm going to 
carry on selling my flowers. After all, I don't want to make a show of my gift. I understand. Good. Yes, I can. Could we handle this in the traditional way? Meaning, I ask first and you answer afterwards. That's more familiar to me. Oui. So, can you tell me if I'll go on a long journey again? Do you really want to know that? I guess so. You are going to die. What? If you're not careful. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's nothing special. You will meet someone unexpected. That blonde ponytailed worm? No, it's not him. It is a rather good-looking person. Male or female? That's five euros, please. Come on. Well, I'm sorry, but soothsaying has its price. Pity. But uh, I'll do you a favor. I'll give you this newspaper. Wow, thanks. I'm honored. Why are you giving it to me? When the time comes, you'll know. Can you tell me what's going on with the weather here in Paris? When I arrived, there was pouring rain and now bright sunshine. Yes, it's true. And it will rain again today. And it's going to be worse than this morning. Well then, I should take advantage of this beautiful weather. Besides, I have nothing better to do anyway. How about a nice little ice cream? Now that you mention it, good idea actually. In Rouge Park, there is a very good ice cream parlor. Where do I find Rouge Park? Do you know Hermetique de Naval, better known as Cite de Baphomet? I sure do. Years ago, I borrowed a bucket from a painter, tricked a bouncer, then I... Monsieur. Oh, sorry. What was I... Ah, yes. Two roads on from there, the park begins. It's not particularly big, but the ice cream parlor is worth a visit. Thanks for the tip. I must be going now. Maybe we'll see each other again. Yes, we will. Certainly. Oh no, that sounds familiar. Flower Vendor was right. Apart from the ice cream parlor, which is in fact an ice cream van, and a fountain, there isn't much here. A park bench. Well, it's sprinkling. I'm not thirsty. Up there is an absolutely enormous ice cream cone. Impressive. Of course, you've noticed that the cone is only two meters tall, haven't you? The van's window. Is it steamed up, or why is it so difficult to look through? What can I do for you? I'd like three scoops of ice cream, please. One strawberry, one vanilla, and one chocolate. Is that three euros? Oh. Oh, now, don't tell me you haven't got any money. I don't have to say it if you don't want to hear it. Can't guys like you think of a better way to... Listen, it's not a scam or whatever you're about to call it. Oh, isn't it? And what is it, then? Actually... I see. Come back when you have the money. This sculpture somehow reminds me of Nico. I can see three coins down there. I am one lucky beggar.
This must be three euros. At least that's what I think. I've got money this time. Is the same again? Yes, please. Three euros again, please. Here you go. Now are you trying to take the piece out of me? These coins aren't three euros, but three old German Felix. I'm really sorry, I didn't... Now cut the talking. I only want to see you at this window again when you have money. And with money, I mean euros. Understand? Of course. Good. Hmm. What does a euro coin actually look like? Bugger off! Okay, okay, I'm leaving. This is the newspaper the flower vendor gave me. It's folded twice. One of the headlines catches my eye. Café de la Chandelle Verte opens its gates at 4 o'clock this afternoon for the first time since the bombing. I should stop by. I find an envelope wrapped in the paper. It reads, for the right moment. There are three euros in the envelope. The vendor really knew what was going to happen. Three euros. It's me again. I'm telling you, if you don't have money now, you're in trouble. Three euros. You see? I don't want to know where you got them. Here's your ice cream. Thanks. Ew. This ice cream tastes like dead socks. Gross. I can't sit down now. I must find out what's wrong with Nico. advertising column with a few commercial posters. Not very interesting. Apart from one advertisement I noticed right away. Retired gendarme looking for a vacancy as an assistant policeman. Assistant policeman. That's typical of the French. Under the main part of the advertisement, there is another sentence. Don't cross the road until the little man shows green. It would be silly to rip them off. I don't believe it. After all these years, they've really whipped this cafe into shape. I shouldn't just help myself. Monsieur, stop... stop... Stobart, do you still remember me? Yes, certainly. Your friend Nico used to talk about you a lot. And besides, you're the man who helped me up and comforted me after the attack. And you didn't give me alcohol to drink. What have you been doing all these years after the attack? If I tell you that, you'll think I'm crazy. I'm doing that already. Uh, to microphone, je comprends. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Just thinking out loud. So... Whatever. After the bombing, I worked in a small cafe just around the corner. Didn't you have to recover from the shock? Not really, to be honest. Crazy. Didn't I tell you? When this cafe reopened, I didn't hesitate for a second. And here I am. It's just great to hear such a success story in these depressing times. I'll have a seat. If I can get you anything, just call me, oui? Okay, thank you. Now, who 
who's that? Oh, it's George, our friend and adventurer. Hi, Andre. What brings you back to Paris after all this time? Let's say it's private. It's something to do with Nico, oui? That's none of your business, Andre. Oh, come on, Georgie boy. Cut it out, Andre. Okay, calm down. If you change your mind, let me know. Andre. Did you change your mind? It's about Nico. Something about her disappearance? Oui? She disappeared? Didn't you know that? No, I didn't. She didn't tell me. A while ago, Nico went completely underground. For two or three weeks, nobody heard anything from her. Her employer was worried too, and I informed the police. Why didn't anyone tell me? I sent you a text message. Stop lying, Andre! Okay, I, I didn't think it necessary for you to get involved. I'm her boyfriend, goddammit. Ex-boyfriend, you mean? No, no. I usually mean exactly what leaves my mouth. Oh, whatever. Nico reappeared after these three weeks, just as though nothing had happened. What did she say? When I asked her about her being gone for so long, she only told me she had visited her mother in the country. That makes sense, I guess. Georges, her mother has been dead for nearly two years now. Maybe Nico thought I didn't know, or maybe... Maybe what? I don't know, but the worst is yet to come. It gets even worse? Oh yes, there was a rumor that Nico had tried to kill Bernard Lemar, the acting mayor of Paris. Do you really believe that? I don't know what to think. Since she has been meeting those people, she hasn't been who she used to be. Meeting what people? Come out with it, Andre! I don't have any details, but I know that she regularly attended those strange group meetings. One night I followed her, but near Montfasson, I lost track of her. Montfasson? But that's the place where... Exactly. The place where the Templars suffered their worst hour, and where regular near Templar meetings are held. It can't be true. Nico and the Templars? It makes absolutely no sense. Why not? The evidence clearly indicates that. Sounds like you're suspecting, Nico. I'm a student of history, George. I believe in facts, and the facts do not give a good impression of Nicole. My grandfather died, Nico isn't who she was, and is suspected of trying to assassinate the mayor. That's just incredible. Have you asked Nico about the attempted assassination, Andre? I did, but she denied everything. Did the local press cover the story? They did, George. The story went through all the papers for days. France National had a particularly elaborate take on the topic. Interesting. Maybe the paper's archive can be of help to you. The papers must still be available from there. How did these rumors actually emerge? I mean, how's anyone supposed to know that Nico was the assassin? Is there any evidence? I'm sorry, George, but I must be going. See you later. What a pity to see you go. I don't know much yet. The only clue I have is the France Nationale, and I must find out what's behind those rumors. I have a feeling Nico might be in danger. building is in a sorry state. Yeah, sure. I'll just put it in my pocket. This must be the France National Office building. There is a sheet of paper pinned to the door, closed for cleaning. Makeshift editorial office in Rue Marie Curie. Damn. How am I supposed to get hold of the old newspapers now? Great idea. 
kicking in the door shouting, Hello, it's George Stobart and I'm burgling this building. Maybe it would be wiser to try and get inside a little less conspicuously. A heavy door secured by a padlock. I can't get in there. There are a lot of beautiful things in there. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything that would fit me. Smashing the window would be the wrong way and way too tiring. I don't believe it. That nice old lady still sells flowers and tells her customers their fortune more or less accurately. Funny, Nico's name is misspelled. There's a T instead of a D at the end. As Nico's name is misspelled, I'd love to take the label out and correct the mistake, but I'll leave it there for now. Nico seems to have become interested in DIY recently. Either this, or it's one of Andre's silly presents. I can imagine Nico's face when Andre brought her a screwdriver from his expedition to Africa. Oh, Andre, you shouldn't have. Well, Andre, you really shouldn't. Always useful. A nice view of the hustling streets of Paris. Not really feeling like suicide at the moment, maybe later. I can't believe Nico still keeps this old, disgusting thing. Yes, I could actually throw it out of the window, but somehow I'm lacking the whole George overcome all your doubts and destroy that stupid thing impulse. Hmm, the bag seems to be quite full. The last time I ransacked Nico's handbag, I found plenty of useful items, and that garbage present that Andre had given her. A pair of red panties. My hands reach into the bag. Ouch! I cut myself on a sharp metal something. As I get it out, I realize it's a pair of scissors. Nasty. Again, my hands touch something pointed, but this time I'm prepared for it. A hairpin. The last time I reach into Nico's handbag, I feel something smooth. Oh my god, it's a small purple slip. Probably another of Andre's presents. That sneaky little... A note. I can see the letters M-E-T. Is that a place? Bap ho hmm. Seems like the rest of the note is missing. That's it, Baphomet. But what now? That's Nico's camera. She used it virtually everywhere in Syria, Quaramante, and devil knows where else. Yes, I could take some photos, but I don't think they would be of much use. I'd better leave that to Nico. There's a poster with Broken Sword 2 on it. No, I won't. Why should I rip it from the wall?
Nico's computer, it's running. Nothing happens. The operating system seems to be secured with a password. I type in Baphomet. It bleeps and buzzes. Then the screen displays a list of names and addresses. The right edge of the paper shows the coat of arms of the Parisian police. That must be a copy of an official document. Maybe an address list. Maybe Nico is working on a new story. I can't make heads or tails of it. That's Nico's handbag. That's Nico's answering machine. I've got one of these myself back home in America, and I hate it. The unread message light is blinking on it. I know it's not exactly gentlemanly to listen to someone else's messages, even though in this case that someone else is my girlfriend. But I must know who called Nico. It's me. Since you're not in, I guess you're on your way to our meeting place. I expect you to be at the fountain on time. At the fountain? Which fountain did the voice mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's a place I know well. There's a bear with a heart embroidered onto it. Cute. Quite big and fuzzy. Great idea, cuddling into the blanket and pretending everything was fine. But I have to know what's wrong with Nico. I've got lots of memories of this place. This time again, a trace led me here. I don't feel like coffee at the moment. Maybe later. I still remember how I sat here and talked to Andre six years ago. Man, it was horrible. This would make sense if there was water in there and it was 40 degrees or more. It's strange, but in seven years I have never seen this fountain sprinkling water. I wonder why it's not working this time. I won't go in there again. I still have a fishy smell in my nose. A medieval building combined with an elegant 80 style fuse box. Tres cheek. Um, no. Not without a good reason, and above all, not with my bare hands. Why should I open a fuse box in the middle of Paris without any reason? These are the remains of the gallows on which the Templars were hanged during the reign of Philip the Fair. Gruesome. So you want me to hang myself? I'd rather not, but thanks for the offer. An original Parisian tramp is sitting on the ground. There's a bottle of whiskey on the ground, too. He keeps playing around with the flashlight. Hi, my name is Stobart. George Stobart. And my name is Les. Homeless. Is that your flashlight? 
Yes, it is. And I'm not selling. What if I gave you something else in return? You don't have anything I want, believe me. If you knew what I sometimes carry around, I once had a fish in my pocket. But I'm sure you don't have the item of my dreams. Who knows? You have a woman slip with you, oui? You're not serious, are you? Oh, why not? Many guys have a feminine side. I don't. You do. Just look at your hairdo. What about it? It's feminine. It's not. It's just blonde. It's as masculine as my physique. That was the second thing I wanted to mention. Stop it. I'll see if I can get you a slip. Look at this. <laughs> what about it? Is that a present for me? Nope. Why do you show it to me then? To be honest, I don't know. What do you think of this? Mon Dieu! I have never seen anything like this before. Really? It's a hairpin. I know. This is a pair of scissors. I found them in my girlfriend's handbag. You have a girlfriend? Um, yes. Why not? If I were a woman, I'd definitely not put up with a guy like you. Well, luckily, you're not a woman. I've got the slip. Give it here now. Here you are, but I want the flashlight. There you go. Hmm. I don't know, but the battery seem to be dead. Thanks. The batteries seem to be dead. Now I've found an item that's worth risking my life for. Two frickin' batteries. Well, it's better than nothing. George Stobart, the only man foolhardy enough to fumble around in a high-voltage fuse box for batteries. Hmm. Power seems to be on. I'm feeling a little queasy. Should I really put my bare hands in there? Hmm. Power seems to be on. I'm feeling a little queasy. Should I really put my bare hands in there? I'd rather not. Damn, that hurt! But at least I have courageously acquired two Mafasol batteries. Great! Not a bad idea, but the hairpin alone doesn't work. Now the hairpin is a perfect lockpick. I can't see anything. There's no point in going in there without a flashlight. It's pitch black in there. That's not going to work. D. 
Damn, the batteries seem to be dead. Ouch! Ah! Oops! I should hurry up. I don't need a fire extinguisher. I search the shelves. On the shelves, the newspaper issues are neatly arranged according to their year of publication. These are the shelves of the current year, 2003. While searching the shelf, I find an issue that seems most interesting. The attempted assassination is criticized in bold letters. Reporter under suspicion of murder. The renowned Parisian journalist Nicole Collard was released without charge early on Monday evening after several hours of interrogation. According to Police Inspector Henry, suspicions of Miss Collard being involved in the murder of Mayor Bernard Lemire could not be backed up with hard evidence. Lemire had lived under the threat of repeated assassination attempts in recent months after overtly confronting Parisian cults and their totalitarian structures. The 34-year-old photographer Collard came under suspicion when the Irish journalist Ferdinand Arvin accused her of being involved with the assassination and membership of a cult called the Knights Templar. Arvin announced he would back up his accusations with hard evidence within the next couple of weeks. He is currently living in an unidentified safe house under 24-hour guard by police for his own safety. That makes no sense. Why should Nico want to kill anyone? I must learn something about that reporter, Arwen. But how? No way. Damn it! It's stuck! No way. My common sense forbids it. That's not a good idea. I must learn something about that reporter, Arwen. But how? The fire extinguisher is fastened securely to the wall. That was close. I seem to have made an enemy. Strange. The only one who knew I was here was Andre. I won't go in there again.
I scanned this outdated newspaper for something useful, but accept a report about a school that was hit by an outbreak of constipation, affecting hundreds of children. There's nothing of interest. As I look at the list again, the name Ferdinand Arvin catches my eye. That's the journalist mentioned in the same newspaper article as Nico. Right next to his name, it says Mouvage 12. That's the Hotel Ubu! Nico kills Mayer. Nico gets interrogated. Nico disappears. Reporter claims to have incriminating evidence. Nico reappears and has Iron's secret address on her computer. I have a bad feeling about this. And not only because I'm talking like Andre. The chalkboard displays the different meals the hotel has on offer. Today's special is chicken fillet with chips. The chalkboard is fine where it is. Oh no. Masia Stobar, nice to see you again. I can't say it's nice to see you. Flap, stop waving the gun around, will ya? Sorry, Guido. So, Monsieur Stovall, may I beg you to move? We don't want to make a scene, do we? No scene? No scene? Do you expect me to let myself be shot just like that? If you cooperate, nothing will happen to you. For the moment. What do you want? Oh, come on, Stobart. Don't be stupid. Since you stuck your nose into things that were none of your business seven years ago, you've been number one on the list of enemies of the Templars. Stop that garbage. The Templars are gone! If you say so. Just a coincidence that your girlfriend met with people who call themselves the Templars, don't you think? Liar! Nico would never get involved with those idiots! I could see a broad smirk spreading all over his face. You've met Mademoiselle Collard today? Yes, why? I'm just curious. If you touch her... That need not concern you anymore. Not since she's been going out with that fair-haired history professor. Andre? Right, that's his name. The two make an excellent match, don't you think, Monsieur Stobart? Another lie. Every word that leaves your mouth is a lie, Guido! How did you manage to get out of the church in Bannockburn, anyway? None of your business. Can I shoot him now? Not yet, Flap. Not yet. Oh, man. Can't we just be friends? What? and lose out on two million euros? What are two million euros compared to a real, long-lasting friendship? So, the Templars still exist? Yes, and they're stronger than before. If you think you wiped out all the Templars during your Scottish adventure, you were sadly mistaken, Mr. Stobart. And you guys work for them again? Monsieur Stobart. We are the kind of people who are often called mercenaries. We get our money, and that's all that counts for matters to us. Believe me, that's gonna change. I'll stop you again this time, even if I have to travel around the globe for it. Ah, but you see, Monsieur Stobart, that's exactly what Flap and I are here to prevent.
Ah, but you see, Monsieur Stobart, that's exactly what Flap and I are here to prevent. Ah, <sighs> that was close. No. I have some good memories of this piano. During my first stay here, its keys were literally ravaged by a robust lady called Lady Piermont. I wasn't even interested in piano lessons when it was in to get mom and dad to teach you how to play. There's a boy standing there playing with a thingy. Afternoon, boy. Hello. What's that toy you're playing with? It's a Freggy. A Fremmy? Freggy. Don't you know anything? Sort of rubber ball. Looks funny. Hello, who are you? I'm George Stobart. That's a weird name. No, it's not. But it is. No, listen. Stobart is a perfectly normal name. Stobby? <laughs> My name is not weird, okay? Stobber, Stobby, Stobbo. Who would have imagined this? I travel halfway around the world to have an argument about my name with a boy with the intelligence of a banana. My dad has a better name than you, mister. So, what's his name then? Flap? Nope. Ferdinand Irvine. Where's your father now? He went out. Told me to wait here, but he ain't come back yet. When did you last see your father? About three hours ago. Nothing seems to have changed around here. Even the receptionist is the same guy. Good afternoon. A good afternoon, monsieur. What can I do for you? Have you recovered from the shock? I beg your pardon? I know I shouldn't have let her loose on you, but I had no other option. If you understand. Uh, no, I don't understand. Lady Piermont, the pianist and magistrate. Ah oui, the madame in violet. The beast, mon ami. Oh, well, she wasn't that bad. A little eccentric, but okay. You are not a target, if you don't mind me saying. I guess you're right. I'd like to hire a room, please. One moment, please. I'm afraid we don't have any rooms left. Really? But there doesn't seem to be much going on here. As that might be your first impression, but come the evening, come the guests. This hotel will be busy then. Damn it. Pardon? Never mind, just thinking out loud. What do you think of this? Wow, a uh, screwdriver. I've always wanted one exactly like this. Really? Of course not. Why do you bother me with such a thing? Well, to be honest, I don't know. This is a pair of scissors. Ah, uh, we, oui, I can see that. So? So what? What do you think? That you are crazy in the coconut. The door is locked. This is the place where I came across Khan for the first time. The memory of it still gives me the creeps. I pull at the door, but it doesn't open. I can't get in there. There's something under the door. I wonder if that's intentional. Probably not. It's a hotel reservation belonging to a certain Ferdinand Iron. 
Double room, one adult, one child. Hiding Irwin in a well-known hotel is not the most creative idea the Parisian police ever had to protect the witness. If I can just get into that room... Hey, little man. Hello. What do you think about my scissors? They look dangerous. Be careful. Um, I will. It's a hotel reservation for a person called Ferdinand Irwin. Hi, me again. Hello, Stobby. Listen, would you like to play a little game? Oh yeah, a game. Freggy. Gets boring after a while. Here's the deal. We'll go to the receptionist together. Repta... what? That man over there. Uh-huh. And there we're gonna play father and son, alright? Sounds good. Me again. I can see that. What can I do for you this time? I reserved the room. Ah, uh, have you? May I see your reservation? There you go. Mr. Ferdinand Irvine and son? Brian. Arthur. Pardon? Arthur. Brian is his middle name. Okay, here's the key to room number 122. Thanks. I wish you and your son a pleasant stay. That doesn't work. The wall decoration is unique. Uniquely ugly. That's too big to take with me. I don't have anywhere to put it in. I'm not thirsty at the moment. Mini bar prices are always exorbitant, especially in Paris. The first picture shows the assassination attempt on Mayor Lemire. A short distance from the action, a person catches my eye. Hastily running away, she's looking over her shoulder. As if she's been caught doing something wrong. She's a medium-sized slender, obviously wearing a bad wig. Wait a minute. I know that face. I is that Nico? The second picture was taken at night, but I instantly recognized the place it was taken. Mafasan. Some people wearing robes, almost impossible to make out. Somehow I have a feeling that there wasn't a children's birthday party. There's a woman in the middle. She seems to be talking to someone. I have a bad feeling about this. The third picture confirms my instinct. It's a close of the woman. It's Nico! She's about to pull the hood deep over her face. Irvin must have taken the shot just moments earlier. Who's she talking to? An older man is standing next to her. His robe is different from those the others are wearing. It's more elaborate. Around his neck, he's wearing a big brown cross. The Templar's Cross! Definitely their leader, Big Boss, has turned his face away from the camera. I can't see who he is. I don't know how Nico got into this mess, but I have to help her as quickly as possible. It's time to get some answers from Nico. No, I'd better leave it here. Hmm? Hmm? Hmm?
Wait a minute, what's this? A parade? There are huge barriers blocking the way to Rougerie. Just my luck. I must find another way. He seems to be following the parade with ardent interest. Pardon me. Oh, uh, hello. Could you tell me what's being celebrated here? Yes, this is the traditional opening march. Opening what? You don't know? The annual Parisian city market. It will open its gates tomorrow. That's interesting. Can you tell me how to get to Rougerie? Uh, that's just bad luck, monsieur. The parade will take about two hours. But I have to get there. My girlfriend lives there. I live there myself. I should be at home with my wife and kids, but c'est la vie, monsieur. Come on, celebrate with us instead of complaining. Thanks, but I'm not in the mood for parades. Besides, two psychotic killers are chasing me. Would you celebrate if you were me? That sounds really exciting. Believe me, I'll take dull any day of the week. I can't wait till the parade is over. There must be another way. I'm off. Enjoy the parade. Thanks, and good luck, monsieur. Hello, excuse me, sorry, could I... Hello? They don't even notice me. That's sold by the cardboard nose over there. is dressed as a London billboard. At least he doesn't play an accordion. Hi, there's a lot going on, huh? Have you been standing here all day? Sprechen Sie Dutch? Parlez Vans Francais? His eyes tell me that he understands all right. He just doesn't want to talk. I hate clowns. No way. That balloon bursts like a bubble. I like it. The passers-by don't. They look at me even more grimly than that goat that time in Lunch Mar. At least there's a passage now. That's just my luck. That's the way to Rougerie, but that dog is blocking off the way. Do I look deranged? I never like dogs. This one somehow reminds me of 20. That mud in Marseille. Hmm, maybe it's just me, but this trash looks kind of familiar. No, I hate pushing boxes. There are some ice cream cones. Actually, there are a lot of ice cream cones. I'd better not touch them. Yes, nice doggy.
I was told that my uncle was part of their cult. Georges, at the time, I had no idea that it was the Neo-Templars. I only wanted to help him. I infiltrated their order under the false name of Christine Wu to get my uncle out of there. But when I met him, there I was stunned. His eyes were just empty like a dead man's gaze. It was very disturbing. He seemed to have been drugged. But worse than that, he kept stammering the word gate. Do you know what he meant by that? No idea. It's possible that it was just the drugs. That would explain both his gaze and his stammering. Why was your uncle part of the Templars anyway? I guess he couldn't resist the temptation. Temptation? Yes, George. Two million euro. <laughs> hey, on second thought, the Templars aren't such bad folks after all. But this talk about a gate worries me still. But that's probably a result of the drugs. True. It could be. But maybe it has something to do with the Templars' plans. You might be right. Where would you start your investigation? Hmm. The only one who knew about my plan was a good friend of André. A good friend? Yes, a friend. Nothing more. What's his name? Jimmy McLuff, an English historian whose main field is the Templars. Why did you let him in? Because he could provide me with inside information about the Order. Have you met him in person? No, I avoided that. After all, it might have been a trap. We only exchanged emails. So he's never actually seen you or heard your voice? No. Do you think he might have given you away? It's possible. Maybe I should pay him a little visit. I don't think that's a good idea, Georges. The Templars are involved with everything. So why not with McLuff? But we can't just sit and wait until the Templars get what they want. Who knows what they're up to this time? Hmm. Where can I find this Jimmy McLaw? He has a mansion in York, England. England, huh? I've never been there. And it means something if there's a place I've never been to. George, please stop bragging. But it's a fact. Where exactly can I find McLaw? As I've said, I've never met him. But as André told me... Then we'll never find him. Can't you forget your childish rivalry for one minute? Not for a second. Anyway, you should start at the York Library. McLaugh is a scholar, so he should be registered there. Maybe you can find his address in the personal file. Take a map at the airport. The library should be on there. Will do. I'd better be going. Wish me luck. Okay, Georges. Take care of yourself. I'll ring you as soon as the plane lands.